Thank you for joining us for our weekly live stream from Firaxis Games. My name is Pete Murray, and I'm joined this week by Will Miller, who is the other uh, co-lead designer for Civilization Beyond Earth. Last week we had Dave on. Thank you for uh, coming out to talk to us today about Covert Ops. Yeah, glad to be here, Pete. I, you know, we've, we've done a lot of these so far, and this is the first one I've been able to do, and I'm happy to be here. Well, I'm really excited for you to, to come out and, uh, and talk about this system. This is a neat system. This is uh, diplomacy by other means, um, which is kind of exciting. It's, uh, there are quite a few changes for covered ops from Civilization V. So do um, you want to just talk a little bit about kind of what your thinking was, what you wanted it to be, and... Sure. Um, Civ V's espionage system was really cool. It gave this kind of uh, parallel vector for diplomacy, like you said, to the game that was very interesting. But it was th the central function of that system was to um, basically steal technologies. And there was some, uh, some functionality dealing with the World Congress, but that was kind of it. It was a sort of limited, um, limited way to interact with, with the game. didn't have a lot of overlap with other systems. And when it came time to design Covert Ops, um, we wanted to expand that idea and make it a real meaty uh, system. So there are a lot more uh, things to do, really, mm -hmm. and a lot more overlap with the game's other systems. Okay, well, we're going to go ahead and we're going to show you guys some of that today. So for today's demo, we are going to be playing as the American Reclamation Corporation because their, um, I guess their bonus is that their covert ops are 25% more effective, generate 25% more intrigue than everybody else's, which means as you engage in them, they sort of ramp up everything that much faster. That's true, and that's, that's one of the big features we've added to the, the espionage system and the covert ops system, is this idea of intrigue. One of the things we wanted to avoid was to have um, covert ops kind of sneak up on players. Mm -hmm. uh, you don't want to get your city flipped because, or you know, a, a dirty bomb detonated in your city or something like that because you um, didn't pay attention or, or worse, right? Right. So the intrigue is this, the intrigue level for a city is kind of like the, the little stars you get in GTA when you, when you misbehave, <laughs> when you right? Things, yeah. <laughs> so um, you get, you get uh, as more um, covert operations are done in a city, you accumulate these uh, intrigue levels. Mm -hmm. And the intrigue levels gate the individual operations. So you can't do the highest level operation until there's been a lot of other covert activity, covert ops activity going on in that city. Okay. Well, we're actually going to show you guys some of that today because we have some different escalating levels of covert ops going on. But let's go ahead and we're going to jump into our game first. So uh, playing as ARC, uh, we've just completed the agency in our capital city of Central here. So I'm going to go ahead and actually go into uh, the city itself and show you that this is something that you need to build inside of the city. Um, that it is kind of, it's a national wonder, essentially. That's right. You need to build the spy agency. It's not the only way to get spies. And if you, there are certain ways you can complete quests or virtues um, to get spies before you have a spy agency. But the spy agency gives you three. And that's, right. that's a pretty good start. And let's just see where that's located on the, uh, on the tech web here, because it's worth figuring out. It's actually in this first tier of technologies. It's actually here under computing, so if you want to get to it, you can actually get to it pretty early on in the game. I mean, you just need to finish engineering or ecology and move on from there. That's right. Um, there's some other cool things on this as well. Uh, Gunboats, uh, very useful for a variety of reasons. <laughs> the network, which is a, um, a fantastic science um, building, which also stacks with copper, if that's a, a resource that you have available to you. And the missile rover, which is going to be your, your handy tool for taking down uh, cities and stations and things like that. So that's where the agency is located on the tech web. So we're going to go ahead and we're going to return to the map here. And uh, the first thing uh, that's worth pointing out is that there is actually a quest associated with this. So uh, when you complete the quest uh, for your eyes only, um, <laughs> which is pretty cool, uh, you've received an encrypted, encrypted message from the Culper cell, which uh, I would highly recommend people Google that because that's a, a neat little homage yeah, the, the Culper Cell, there, there's a series of quests that uh, are given out to you as you do more um, covert ops related things. Your interest, the Culper Cell's interest in you will increase as you get new spies and do operations and they'll hand these quests out to you. And uh, the Culper Cell, the idea behind them is that they're a, um, a clandestine organization that followed you from old earth and they, mm -hmm. they're trying to spread their influence. And um, at the end, um, they actually build a Culper Lodge in your capital city, which gives your, which makes your agents um, top rank when they, uh, when they're required. Gotcha. Um, I just keep thinking of the Stonemason song from The Simpsons. <laughs> um, the first thing uh, that you're asked to do when you do found an agency is select a project, and I think this is a really interesting feature for Covert Ops. 
These are things you can do with your spies. If they stay at headquarters, they can increase uh, various aspects of your, your civilization here. That's right. So like a lot of the other systems in Beyond Earth, um, the covert ops system is kind of opt-in. Mm -hmm. uh, you don't have to emphasize it. It's, uh, it can be extremely beneficial if you do, but if you don't really care about spying, or if you're very late game and you're going for domination victory, say, and there aren't that many cities left for you to put agents in, um, the National Security Project is a way to make the agents that you've acquired useful. So you can do all kinds of things. So Homeland Security, for example, that gives buffs to city strength and hit points, um, research and development, which uh, is bumped up, you know, production for wonders, et cetera. So there's a lot of options here, and these options all scale based on the number of agents that you have at headquarters. Okay, and there's two of these that I want to look at in particular, operations reconnaissance and operations support. Operations support lowers the risk to agents in the field, and operations reconnaissance increases the chance of success. Um, I noticed that you've actually broken them out. So these are separate die rolls then? What happens with these? That's right. So when an, an operation is performed by an agent, there are two calculations that are made. Um, one is to see what happens to the agent, and one is to see if the operation is successful or not. Um, there are a couple reasons that, that we did this, and mainly it's for um, kind of balancing purposes so that we can, for example, lower um, the number of turns that it takes but raise the risk to the agent or raise the, the probability of failure. Um, but it's, it's, an interesting, it's an interesting aspect of the system because you can have an operation succeed but the agent die, or you can have an operation fail but the agent escapes detection. Um, so there's sort of degrees of failure uh, for the agent. And I'm going to assume that these are also modified by difficulty as level. Yes, difficulty that's true. Level as well. So if you're, if you're playing a, a risky, um, high difficulty game, those agents are going to be <laughs> have a harder life. It's also interesting to point out in terms of the agent's risk, yeah. um, the more agents that are in a city, the higher the risk. Interesting. And, and this is to kind of rubber band sort of the dog pile effect. So you don't want in a big eight player multiplayer game Everybody dogpiling into that one city that kind of got a little bit of intrigue at the beginning. And Casablanca. <laughs> right, exactly. So there's a little bit of, there's some balance there too. Um, but yeah, that's kind of how the, how the results are calculated. Gotcha. All right, well, let's go ahead and um, we'll try to keep our agents alive. We'll, we'll choose ops support, but I think in this case, we're probably going to want to assign our missions. So we notice that there's a meter that fills up, takes three turns for this operation to come online. Yeah, so the National Security Project, you can switch it at any time. Okay. You always have to have one active, but you can switch which one that is at any time. And uh, we didn't want you to be able to switch them you at, know, will. at will to kind of micromanage or game the system. So there's a little bit of time built in to, to switch the project. Okay, and I noticed that we've got uh, three agents to start with. Um, we can assign them. This is very similar if you've played Civ Five. This will seem very familiar to you. Uh, if you put them in your own city, I presume that means they're on counterintelligence duty. That's right. And when an agent's on counterintelligence duty, um, they can capture and kill other agents that are trying to perform operations there. They'll also gradually lower the intrigue level as long as you have an agent in your city. And the higher the level, the, the agent's rank, um, the faster. The, the intrigue will decrease and the more likely they are to catch enemy spies. Okay, I think I'm up on everybody right now and I really want to send these guys out <laughs> in the field. So um, we can see the capital cities of the other factions in the world. I'm going to choose Magan because it's awfully close and it sure would be nice to have an agent there. Um, I'm also going to choose uh, Sanagata Carbarost because KGB versus CIA, classic matchup. And then uh, PAC has usually got runaway something, so uh, that's, that's usually a good place to stick somebody as well, too. So, uh, we've assigned these guys. It will take them four turns to travel out there, and then uh, presumably they'll contact us and want to know what's going on. That's right. All right. So that is how Covert Ops gets set up. But rather than wait for a uh, number of turns, uh, we're going to take a moment, and I'm going to load onto another game here real quick. So once, you know, your agents do have to, to travel and they arrive. Um, so once they arrive in the city, you get some immediate benefits. Okay. And, and the, one of the things that you get is visibility on that city. So right. as long as you have an agent there, um, you'll have visibility uh, around that city. So you can kind of see, you know, the unit they just made that's parked in the city or if they have something garrison there or, you know, you, you can kind of see what improvements they're building close to the city. Uh, so it does give you some additional visibility just right off the bat, which right. is nice. And then there are a couple of things you can do right away, I guess, which we'll see in the next save here. Things like establish a network or start to smuggle um, that require very little intrigue and that you can do right away. 
Well, actually, we're going to, uh, we've advanced uh, a number of turns at this point. We're almost uh, 40 or 50 turns up from where we were. And we've just had some results come in. Uh, one of them is that we have stolen some technology, which is pretty cool, but our agent was not detected. And one where our agent was detected, but the operation was still a success. So um, we're going to go ahead and we're going to pop over here real quick. And now you can see what Will was talking about. Oh, let's point this out. This right here, this is the, uh, the intrigue meter, as it were. So it fills up. So he's got right. three and almost four stars, four right. levels in intrigue. So that'll unlock higher level uh, operations that you'll be able to do. And we can actually uh, scroll down and we can see what the city is doing. And we can see that there's no agent present. Um, there's an ops history here. And we can actually see that we've, uh, we've done pretty well here up to this point. So I've completed a number of operations up to this point. Uh, one, the first operation uh, that comes available to you, and I'll actually come over here and choose it, is establish a network. And basically, this just increases the intrigue level in the city? It increases the intrigue level a little bit, but it also provides you with this UI that you're seeing that's, that's a fly out from the city banner. Okay. And it gives you um, the ops history, the prior ops, as well as uh, an, an, what we call an intel report. Right. And the intel report at the base level with a, with a um, uh, newly recruited spy basically just gives you the yields. Okay. Um, but you get increasingly more information as, this, as the uh, uh, agent ranks up. Okay. And we can see that the other level zero ops are, are steel energy, and 480 is a pretty big pile of energy from somebody. Uh, once you're at intrigue level one, you can pull some science out of this. Now, I've, I've clearly succeeded with both of these ops before. Now, did that pull 202 beakers uh, from Kozlov's pile? Yeah, it's actually important to note that um, it's not zero sum. So just like trade, uh, kind of behind the scenes, those numbers or that, that value is not really subtracted from the person you stole it from. It's just sort of generated and given to you. Yeah. And the way that we've balanced the system is that any operation that is uh, intrigue level three or lower um, really has no effect on the player that, that it has been done to. Okay. So if, you're, if your intrigue level is three or lower and people are doing things in your city, it's not going to hurt you. It'll benefit them, and you may want to stop them from doing that for that reason, but it's not going to hurt you. Uh, intrigue level four or five is when you get into the really damaging stuff. We're going to cover that later on because they're, <laughs> they're also quite a lot of fun. So um, now that we've ramped this up to three and some, we actually have a new, um, a new op available to us, which is called Recruit Defectors. And this is uh, pretty neat because this gives you random military units. I guess these are disaffected people who want to come and join your your culture instead of somebody else. But on a standard game, this takes 14 turns. That's that's quite a while to wait for something to come up. It is quite a while, but you get, again, depending on the rank of your agent, you'll get you know three or, or so of these, of these units. And what's interesting about this is that they're not selected from the ones that you can build. They're selected from the ones that randomly selected from the, the military units that your opponent can build. So you may end up getting a unit that uh, you, can't, you can't produce yourself. So if I did this late game and I were really successful, I might pull a different affinity unit? That's not, you don't pull different affinities, you just pull a different class, and it's, okay. it's uh, your, the units you recruit are, um, are trained, shall we say, <laughs> in the ways of your, of your civ to adopt your affinity before they're placed on so, the field for you. Which is clearly why they joined my civilization. Clearly. They wanted to be purity all along. <laughs> but that particular uh, op is really good in combination with the emancipation victory, because you can keep your military and then <laughs> send the defectors that you recruit <laughs> through the gate. <laughs> yeah, exactly. This is the, uh, the Foreign Legion of right. the ARC. That's uh, outsourcing. Yes. Outsourcing. <laughs> ARC is big in outsourcing. All right, let's hop over to Magan here. We can see how we're doing. Um, this intrigue is a little bit lower over here. Probably fewer agents operating. Yeah, you may have not done as many, um, as many operations there. There could be, uh, it says there's no counterintelligence agent there. Um, so probably just haven't worked that city quite enough. All right, let's see. Well, uh, we did get uh, found out after stealing augmentation, but uh, it still, still was pretty much worth uh, we're choosing a new operation here. Um, not quite to four yet. We'll still go ahead and we will take recruit defectors because I think that's a, that's a pretty substantial benefit to us. So it's All important right. also to note that there are kind of degrees of failure here. So you were detected. Your right. agent was detected, but your operation succeeded. And you can either be, um, you can go undetected, you can be detected, you can be identified, or you can be killed. Oh, wow. And uh, undetected means you just get away scot-free. The other player's not notified of it. Everything happens, you know, it's all hush-hush, yeah. you get away. Um, detected is, means that the other player is notified that something happened, but not what or who did it. 
Interesting. Um, identified means that you are caught. Uh, the, the player is notified who um, was performing the op, and your agent managed to escape. So it kicks you out of the city back to headquarters, but okay. your agent gets to live. And of course, if you're killed, you're killed, right? <laughs> and actually, we can go into diplomacy now. We can see that Barre is still actually friendly with me. So he knows somebody is in there stealing his stuff, but he doesn't quite know doesn't who Doesn't quite is. know who, right. Oh, interesting. All right, well, um, Let's go back into the game. I'm actually going to let this progress up a turn. Uh, we got some city going on here. Axiom is building some stuff. Um, I can't remember what I was building here. So I think the answer is an institute. And we should have an op end. Let's see what happens now. And siege worms just <laughs> ate my worker. Oh, OK. So we had a failure. So our agent failed to steal any science from Tiangong, but uh, wasn't detected. So he gets to stay there. Okay. So there's, there's no negative impact there. Um, he, he doesn't have to leave the city. And uh, um, Dao Ming was informed that there was something that happened, but not who did it. OK. And uh, over here, um, less intrigue generated because the op failed? Yeah, intrigue is not contributed unless the operation is successful. Okay. So we would have to choose a new operation, and we'd say, go back after some science again and hope that that would work out for us. Right. OK. Uh, well, what I'm going to do is we'll go ahead and we'll load into our last save, because uh, that will be interesting. This comes back into the game shortly after all of those results uh, from our last round of operations. And I think you guys will find that quite, quite the thing. So um, one of the things that I have noticed is that because uh, stealing science from people is a, is a non-zero-sum game, and you, you get kind of a lot of stuff for it. You can actually use that to outsource your research in a way. So if you're in a fairly bad position where you, you really can't develop science for various reasons, maybe your geography doesn't support it, or you're penned in by aggressive neighbors or something, then it's a very viable tactic to you know, go up to a science-heavy neighbor and just keep taking stuff in suitcases out of a city. That's true, and it doesn't actually have to be a neighbor. The, uh the movement of covert agents is map agnostic. So they don't even have to be very close. The travel time is the same regardless. So but you do need to know where a city is. You do need to know where his city is. And you can always go to their capitals, right? Because the capitals are visible to you as soon as they land. Right. Um, but if you discover another one of their cities, yeah, you could go straight to it. OK. All right, well, I've just completed a quest in this game. But as we come back in, uh, we can say that we have completed the recruit defectors Op, and I'll show you those guys in just a moment. Uh, we do have one detected agent, but um, just detected, and uh, another undetected agent. And these military units right here were not there uh, this previous turn. We've got two units of Marines. Uh, we have a very cool missile rover and a very cool combat rover as well, too. So these aren't promoted because, um, obviously, I've kept my affinity levels uh, fairly low for, for various reasons. Um, but if I, they were higher, they would come in with the upgrades that I'd, I'd purchased for them. Right? That's right. So you, you basically get, you recruit the, um, the unit class. Right. And then whatever upgrades that you've purchased are applied to it. Okay. All right, I'm going to bring the covert ops menu back up. And we can see that we've got, oh, it'll be one more turn before we try stealing a tech uh, from Tiangong. So we're going to go ahead and we're going to choose a new operation. Actually, let's pop over to Carboroast real quick. Oh, wow. Yeah, it's all very exciting. So he's actually building his spy agency now. Uh, no doubt feeling he's missing out on something very exciting at this point. Um, again, the, uh, the list of ops is there. But at this point, we are up to the level five covert ops. And these are the ones that are really ugly. Coup is flip a city, correct? That's right. And this, you know, you, everybody remembers the culture bombs, right? This is kind of... This is kind of that. So if you, if you set this up right, you can flip cities with the, uh, the Cobra Ops system. And this would count towards a domination victory, because this is actually gaining control of his capital. Yes. So conceivably, you could win a domination victory through the Cobra Ops system. You could. That's pretty awesome. <laughs> so we're going to go ahead and we're going to say, uh, enjoy, our, you know, enjoy good living with the ARC and <laughs> credit at the company store. Um, and we'll check choose a different op over here. Let's hop over to Magan for a section. Uh, it actually has it capped out. So it's like quite. we're just shy of that, so we're not going to be able to pick flip Magan. 
but we do have this hack satellites, and this is pretty cool. Yeah, so hack satellites basically will take, um, if, if successful, it will deorbit any satellite within um, some range of the city. Okay. So that can be pretty devastating if they have a lot of uh, economic satellites. If they're bolstering their economy with lots of stuff in the air, um, you can cripple that pretty quickly, and that'll take a, lo a long time to, to reconstitute. Right. That would also be very handy if you were, you know, say, park a planet carver near somebody. Exactly. You could potentially clear out that pretty good. And five tiles is pretty wide radius. It's a pretty stuff. big radius, let me, right? Uh, let me close this out. We'll see what five tiles from the gun would be. That would be one, two, three, four. Wow. That's that's a pretty good distance. All the way out pretty much to that station there. Yep. All right. And uh, one thing I did want to point out is that we've actually got so many units um, that we're over by one. So we're actually suffering a production penalty um, by having to maintain so many units. But uh, And actually, uh, one of the things that you have to watch out for, this, this sort of reminded me of that, is that uh, if, you, if, you are, if you have too much unhealth, mm -hmm. um, it'll start to affect your effectiveness at, at covert operations. Or actually not yours, your effectiveness, but others affect against you. So, so unhealthy sieves accumulate intrigue faster. Interesting. Yeah. Interesting. So all you need to do is wait until somebody parks a bunch of manufactories, and then uh, <laughs> right. then they'll be good to go. All Super right. Uh, so over here, um, we've got some different things going on. Um, I'm actually getting ready to expand. Um, we'll just get this guy in order. We'll just uh, have some units go off. I wanted, did want to show you what would happen uh, when all of these fire off at the end of next turn. We'll just fortify up because don't actually have anywhere to send these guys right yet. How much Whoa. joy can this new planet hold? And pop up an infinity level all of a sudden. I've left behind. And this is really interesting, and I'll talk about this in a second. Every day I think of Earth. Because a word or phrase evokes a lesson I learned long ago and gets me what I need. Yes, homesteading this world is hard, but all the people pitch in and somehow the work gets done. All right, so we popped up three affinity levels in purity because, and I think this is really interesting, because we stole the tech of surrogacy. And surrogacy is a purity-aligned leaf tech. Mm -hmm. And because it's fairly advanced, it's actually worth a fair amount of uh, XP in the purity line. So I can pop out to the tech web for a moment. And surrogacy is all the way out here. And now I can actually build the Aegis if I... Right. Yeah. <laughs> so that's pretty cool for stealing a tech. Uh, you know, but it is interesting that it changed kind of my affinity flavor. I mean, I was... I was one harmony before, and now I'm I'm three purity, one harmony. So I could potentially get pushed in an interesting direction as a result of uh, of the choices I make. But now I do have uh, upgrades available to me because um, of this affinity level raise. I'm going to take um, I like this attack fortified units, and then the gunner. Uh, he has a choice between what is it? Uh, defend against ranged. And passive heal, and we'll take uh, defend against range because that's really useful, um, especially when you're up against a big frontline formation. All right, so we've we've got some some unit upgrades that we got just for free, just because. Um, right. Yeah. Because every once in a while, you can them. pop one of those techs. You know, uh, if you're if your um, your research shape in the tech tree is kind of asymmetrical, right? If it's not round. There's a chance that you could get that tech that's you know on your your farthest reach, yeah, and uh, pop that thing from from a covert op, and and this will happen. <laughs> you well, get a big bump in affinity. That's still pretty cool, and and that's kind of a neat thing to have happen. So we've talked a lot about how you raise the intrigue level uh, in in your cities, but I think it's probably worth looking at um, some of the options that you have to kind of defend yourself against it, because you know we're playing as the ARC, and obviously we. Uh, are very good at spying, and we're very good at raising the intrigue level. But um, what can you do to protect yourself against somebody who's trying to take all of your cool toys? Yeah, I mean, you have to be able to defend against this stuff. And this is one of the, the places where uh, a lot of the other systems in the game overlap in interesting ways. 
Um, one of the one of my favorite ways to do this is with the hollow matrix satellite. If, yeah. you, if you park a hollow matrix satellite above your city, um, it kicks all the agents out and clamps the intrigue back down to zero. Is that the hollow matrix or the all seer? I'm sorry, that's the all seer. The okay. hollow matrix yeah. gives you 50% less intrigue in, okay. in cities for ops. That's right. So there are two ways you can with satellites. There are two ways you can kind of manipulate the situation. Um, with the all seer, that idea of just like up, oh, we're kicking everybody out. We're going to start over, you know. But, you know, you couldn't do that if you had um, some other domestic satellite over your city. So playing, the, um, playing defensively and bolstering your domestic production with satellites above your cities is a, is a, a tricky game sometimes. But what's interesting is um, because of the real estate that, uh, that a satellite takes up, you can't, it's, it's very hard to do both, to say park a science satellite over a science city and park an all-seer over top of it and kick everybody out. So you really are making a conscious choice at that point to say, yeah, I want to defend this city, or yeah, I really want to just go whole hog on science, and I'll, I'll try to figure out another way to defend it. Yeah, exactly, because they can't overlap. Right. Um, there's, also, um, there's also the human hive, which is a wonder you can build. And yes. The whole idea behind that is that you know, you're, it's a group thing, collective thought. Um, and that reduces the intrigue uh, in your capital by four, or in, in the city. Uh, establish a network there, have some visibility on you, maybe skim some off the top of your you know, economy, but that's it. You're not going to get any of the other high-level um, intrigue things. That's there. interesting. So that's, that's a good defensive wonder that you could build in, in a science city or something to, to prevent that from happening, or in your big trade city. Um, and prevent people from running off with your with your cool stuff. That's right. Um, it's a very neat system. I the the escalating intrigue provides uh, kind of a kind of a big beat and um, moving your agents around. I, I usually do keep. This is a lot more aggressive on on the covered ops than I usually play. I usually do keep a guy back um, at the capital in order to keep an eye on on things, but. Um, the idea of being able to win the game entirely through covert ops is, is an interesting idea. It's, uh, it's a lot of fun. It's pretty cool, but you have to be careful, too. I mean, um, one of these things can fail and have pretty dramatic diplomatic consequences for you. <laughs> <laughs> they, people yeah. get pretty mad if you spy against them. Yeah, um, but assassinating somebody's spy is, is pretty good. Um, one thing I did, didn't see with this, but there are actually ops that you can pull that will recruit additional spies for you. Covert ops that you uh, can pull. Op, yeah. um, there, there virtu there's a virtue that can do it. There's, um, uh, there, or there's a building that can do it. Um, there's no operation that will get you more, oh, okay. more agents. Yeah. Okay. Um, I think and quests. Quests can get Oh, quests will right. do it for you. That's right. Yeah. Yeah. The actually, will give you the, maybe that's what it was. Actually, yeah, I think what you're thinking about is there are a couple quests in the game that have special operations that only activate when the quest is active. It'll Correct. turn them on. So one yes. of those is, I think, one deliver of those is like extract dossier. operatives or something extract like that. Extract operatives and it. deliver dossier, I think. Yes. Um, deliver dossier ups your reputation with uh, the call per cell, and then uh, extract agent is where they ask that's you to get you. Out, and that's when you get the agent. That's right. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Um, so three spies for just building the agency, other ones available through tax buildings, virtues, virtues quests. quests. So you can have up to, what, six or seven? Um, I think the upper bound is actually higher than that. I don't know the exact number. Um, and that was kind of an interesting problem early on in this, in this thing, because you'd get all these spies and you didn't really have anything to do with them mm -hmm. after, after a certain point, particularly in smaller games, like a duel. What are you going to do with you can only have one spy in each city, so what are you going to do with ten if, you, if you're in Everybody's the map, back right? at headquarters. <laughs> right, just hanging out. Yeah. Which is why uh, the national security projects are so cool, because mm -hmm. it doesn't matter how many you have, it could, there, there doesn't have to be an upper limit. Um, they're always useful. That's neat. So conceivably, you could park you know, multiple agents back at headquarters and yeah. just have one super-powered spy on the basis of you know, some op support that he's getting for that. Right. One, one, actually th one thing I like to do is there's an op that... Um, increases your, or sorry, a national security project that increases your effectiveness at operations. Yeah. So park all of your agents at headquarters, except your best one, <laughs> and <he laughs> James Bond, and you send him out. <laughs> and, uh, <laughs> he flips cities and steals yeah. energy, yeah. mixes martinis. But at the same time, if they're at headquarters, they can't be defending your cities. Right. So there's oh, a, that's true. That, that's the other way you, that's the primary way you uh, lower your intrigue, is you have a, a counter spy in the city, and that'll lower it gradually. So if, you, if they're at headquarters, they can't do that, obviously. 
Well, that's a pretty comprehensive look at the Covert Ops system, so I really appreciate you coming out to, uh, to talk to us today. It's a pleasure. Uh, so we'll be back next week uh, talking about the techs of mid-game. Uh, we're going to look at kind of not that initial ring of technologies, which we've gotten a pretty good look at up to this point, but we'll look at that second ring, uh, things like computing, where you're getting your first spy agency and you're starting to figure out your affinity path, uh, unlocking the strategic resources on the planet and exploiting them. Uh, we'll also... I want to remind you that FraxCon is coming up. That's September 27th. So thank you to everybody who has signed up for that. Um, and we're looking forward to running that. And we'll have a report for you when we get done. But we will see you next Thursday at this same time, 2 p.m. Eastern, 11 a.m. Pacific, 8 p.m. Central European time. Thank you very much and have a great day.